Scion of the Ur Dragon. A white, a blue, a black, a red, and a green for a legendary creature, a dragon avatar. A 4 4 flyer that, with the tapping of two mana, you search your library for a dragon card, put it into your graveyard, and if you do, Scion of the Ur Dragon becomes a copy of that card until end of turn, and then you shuffle your library. This is a Scion of the Ur Dragon Commander deck tech. And before we even go any further, to clarify, because there is a great deal of confusion about this commander, when he becomes another dragon, it is still combat damage from your general, from your commander. Even though this Scion could be any other dragon in the history of magic, it is the entity of the card doing the damage that counts as commander damage. So with that being said, let's go through what a commander deck tech, my commander deck tech, looks like with Scion of the Ur Dragon. We're going to start with one basic land of each color. Plains, island, swamp, mountain, and a forest. It is optimal in a five color deck like this to try to have as many different colored sources as, pop as possible. Next up, a command tower, a path of ancestry. This is a great card for any tribal commander deck. A reflecting pool, a haven of the spirit dragon, and a Cavern of Souls. I understand that the Cavern is quite a pricey card. If you can supplement this with perhaps an exotic orchard or something else that can give you multiple colors, you want to try to have as many colored mana sources as possible. Okay, so five basics and these five. Next up we have one of every check land. The Glacial Fortress, the Drowned Catacomb, Dragon Skull Summit, Rootbound Crag, Sun Petal Grove, the Cliff Top Retreat, Isolated Chapel, Sulphur Falls, Hinterland Harbor, and the Woodland Cemetery. One of every check land. Okay. Next up, yep, one of every shock land. Hallowed Fountain, Watery Grave. Blood Crypt, The Stomping Ground, The Temple Garden, Sacred Foundry, Godless Shrine, Steam Vents, Breeding Pool, and an Overgrown Tomb. And again, I will preface this before I even put the stack up there. I get the fact that this land set is beyond comparable from a price standpoint, but it definitely is beneficial to mana fixing. One of every shock land. Or I'm sorry, one of every fetch land. One of every fetch land. And the verdant catacombs. So here we have 40 lands. One of each basic, in case anyone is dastardly enough to play with Blood Moon. Five, ten, ten, and ten. To supplement these lands, a soul ring, and several signets. Gruel, Rakdos, is it? Boros. It is not coincidence that I have every signet that can possibly produce red in this deck. The Orzoth and the Golgari. So there are a total of six of the 10 signets included with the soul ring for a total of 47 mana sources. I suppose in a budget way, we could eliminate the shocks and the fetches, replace them with some more rocks, all 10 signets, maybe some of the pain lands. I do believe the check lands would definitely be worth it. Okay. All right, before we get to our dragons, let's start showing some of the some of the support cards we have. We have an even mix of 26 dragons to 26 spells, non-creature spells. 
Okay, so that's 52, and then our commander is 53, and then our 47 lands and mana rocks for a total of 100. All right, so let's start with our removal. <clears throat> and we're going to have a lot of it here because we have access to all five colors. Swords to Plowshare. Plowshare, sorry. Path to Exile. Assassin's Trophy. Cyclonic Rift. Beast Within. Crossing Grip. Vindicate. I'm usually not a great fan of sorcery speed removal, but I need permanent for a one, a white, and a black. That's too hard to pass up. Anguished Unmaking. And on a side note, I will fully disclose that this may be my all-time favorite flavor text of any card. A Cruelty Beyond Imagining. A pain beyond description. Love it. Love everything about it. Wipe away. Split second is way too underrated. Way, way too underrated. I can't begin to describe how many times this card has stopped an infinite combo. Crux of Fate. I'm always hesitant to play this card because I'm always wary of a blue mage coming into the graveyard, grabbing this card, casting it, and destroying all my dragons. Merciless Eviction. Ah, uh, just making a mess. Hang on a second. Get those over here. All right, that's better. Just trying to deal with this glare. All right, there we go. Merciless Eviction. Reanimate. So now we're past our removal, and now we're getting into some graveyard recursion. There's definitely a graveyard theme as Scion can put any num I can put some dragons into your graveyard for you. Reanimate. Living Death. Patriarch's Bidding is just a wonderful card for any type of tribal deck that's carrying black. It gives you such an advantage. Rise of the Dark Realms. Don't let the nine casting costs seem prohibitive. In this deck, you'll get to nine awfully fast. All right, so now we're moving to some cards that are going to help to advance our attack. The Dragon Tempest, of course. Temer Ascendancy. I think off the top of my head, only one of our 26 dragons would not enable the card draw. The Sneak Attack. <clears throat> Quicksilver Amulet. Cauldron Dance. Get a creature from your graveyard, put it into play. It gains haste. Bring it to your hand at the end of turn. Put a creature card from your hand into play. That creature gains haste. Put it into the graveyard at end of turn. All kinds of shenanigans that can go on there. The only counter spell of the deck. Of the deck. And this, for me, I like to hold on to towards the end when I'm trying to just pound everyone down to the very end. In case anyone has a last second spell. That is it. Pact of Negation. A Teferi's Protection. And here's a couple of tutors. Again, some of these cards I get, they are way up there in price range. I understand that. There's always alternatives. Mystical Tutor. A Demonic Tutor. And a Rite of Replication. This card is just wonderful in this dragon deck. And we're going to see in a little while how many cards this interacts with in such a magnificent way. So much so that we're just going to put that right over here so that we don't forget about it. Okay. So let's bring out the dragons, folks. This is why we're here. What can we make Scion become? What can we turn him into? So let's start with how do we protect Scion when he's out there? 
Well, there are a few guys that can help protect Zion if somebody decides to try to remove him on the turn that you played him or sometime thereafter. We can always enable Scion to become Ojitai, and if he's untapped, he's got Hexproof, so he'll be good. That spell will fizzle. Or, how about an eye for an eye kind of thing? Here's a straight Hexproof Dragon. Someone I've used multiple times to help protect Scion to get to my untap step. And there's the one that will not enable the Temer Ascendancy to draw that card. If Palladium Moors has not attacked, I'm sorry, if it has not dealt damage, it's got Hexproof, another protector for Scion. And Chromium the Mutable. It'll cost you a card in your hand, but it gains Hexproof. It'll keep him alive. Well, it'll keep him from being targeted, I should say it that way. And now we're looking at some dragons that help to provide a benefit for a direct attack just with the creature itself. So you can you can enable Scion to become Wasitora. Have them sacrifice a creature, or if they can't, you get a nice small green cat dragon creature token with flying. The Hellkite Tyrant, grab some artifacts. Okagachi, the Vengeful Kami. Exile and on land permanent, if you were attacked the turn before. The Balefire. I like to call this guy the Token Renderer. Yeah, I know, this... <laughs> I don't feel good. I don't feel wonderful about having Nicole Bolas in here to discard someone's hand. But this is, again, this is for blue mage protection. And a blue mage is not a blue mage if he doesn't have a mitt full of, if he or she doesn't have a mitt full of cards. Scourge of the Throne. Atarka, the World Render. Kite Overlord. Now just look right over to the my thumb over there. You see that writer replication? And you see this 8-8? Eight, eight? And you see how it's haste? Yeah, you see where I'm going with that. You fire a Hellkite. I do have the Ur Dragon in the 99. I do not have him as the commander. I personally think Scion is superior. I will say I have enabled Scion to become the Ur Dragon. That 10 is a nice power and grabbing an extra card or two and putting a permanent into play, not a bad thing either. The Dragon Tyrant. And folks, remember, the entity of the card of Scion is your commander, is your general. So if you enable Scion to become the Dragon Tyrant, and you pump him up through fire breathing by at least five, making him 11 double strike. If your opponent does not have an answer, your opponent is not going to win that game. Dragon Lord Colagon. He is huge in this deck. Specific to the living death, the patriarch's bidding, the rise of the dark realms, giving creatures you control haste, Huge, huge dragon in this deck. Dramaka, this provides some lifelink and it gives you some protection if you're trying to get that last attack in. You, It can enable Scion to become Dramaka and hopefully that will be enough to have no opponents cast any spells in response. Scourge of Care Ridges. Each time there's another dragon that comes out that I want to add to this deck, this guy is usually the first one I want to cut. He's just, he's kind of clunky, he's big, but I understand that he's important. I mean, you can enable Scion real quick as an end step or pre-combat, and then do a quick one in a red to get rid of a bunch of walkers that are small. I get that, I do. <clears throat> Yose. And we're just going to put that thumb action over there to the right of replication again, remembering that the tokens will enter the battlefield, they will die because of the legend rule, but 
they will trigger every time. So all of those creatures that die, you are tapping permanence. There are opponents that are skipping their next untap step that is most likely lights out. And that's the same thing for Kokusho. Bladewing the Risen, he is a fantastic, just fantastic dragon to get some other dragons out of your bat, out of your graveyard through a reanimate or through a sneak attack or through a cauldron dance. This guy does all kinds of shenanigans. The Scourge of Valkus. Again, we're going to go over to here. We're going to show that Rite of Replication. If you kick that with this guy, that's the game. Lothless, the Dragon Queen. Yes, I get it. Again, with the Infect, but similar to the other deck techs that I've done. One source of Infect, just in case there's a Blue Mage. That's all. And the Molten Steel Dragon is one of our combo enablers. One of the fantastic things about Scion is that you can, in response to enabling his ability the first time, you can enable it in response. So technically what you can do is you can enable your Scion once, and then in response to that, you're going to enable it a second time. The second time is the one that will resolve first. So you, s you, you resolve the Molten Steel Dragon, and before that resolves and goes to the first time you put it onto the stack, you pay whatever life you need to to make him as big as you need to if he had to take out one of those pesky island tappers. Okay. Now, before we end, I do want to show a couple of really nice combo, well, not combo pieces, but some synergy that I like to show. Hang on one second. Let's clean this up a bit. So let's say you got Scion on the battlefield and you're open with a ton of mana and you're nearing the end step and you're able to activate his ability in any consecutive ways. Here's one of the best things that I like to set up. If I have a Patriarch's Bidding or if I have a Living Death or if I have a Rise of the Dark Realms, I like to get some of these dragons into the graveyard and then cast one of those sorceries during my turn and try to close out the game. Okay? Because keeping in mind, when these creatures come into play, let's just say we only have these three. These three come into play. They all see each other at the same time. So Lothless is going to trigger twice. And when she triggers twice, Scourge of Valkus is going to trigger six times. One for himself. I'm sorry, five times. One for himself, and then one each for the other two dragons and the two dragon tokens. So that's a big deal. That's a lot of damage, and plus they have haste. And then making that a little more complicated, what if we threw a new Vara Hellkite onto the battlefield as well? And then you attack with those, you attack with the two tokens, and you're doing even more damage. And then let's make it even worse. Let's put the Scourge of the Throne out there. Now you're getting an additional attack phase as long as you're attacking the player with the most life. This is Scion. I love this deck. It is my favorite deck to play with. I have spent many moons cultivating this deck and trying to trim a card here, add a card there. Tell me what you think. What dragons would you add? Which dragons would you take out? Let me know in the comments section, folks. And again, thanks for watching.